perfect shoulders. Very nice. But I have noticed I've been catching more turf here. Butt cheek back to Robbie. Butt cheek, butt cheek, butt cheek. Good. Perfect shoulders. What happens is the left leg then goes to straight and pulls your and pulls your right side up to the finish. Awesome. That felt really good. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell. I'm gonna take you in depth today with a practice session with my coach. I'm gonna introduce you to John Means. John Means has been my coach for about three years, four years now. Yep. We haven't worked too much in the last year. I've been busy making babies and, uh, and working hard, but now that I am a Class A PGA professional, I'm really excited to really chase my dream of playing in a PGA Championship, essentially, and pursue my playing career. So as part of the series, we're gonna talk about what I'm working on my golf game. <laughs> So, John, um, I've been struggling a little bit this this winter, this summer. Essentially, it doesn't mean bad, it doesn't mean great. It's just kind of going out there shooting a couple under par every single round. I've thrown a few few 66s as well. I really wanted to kind of dive deep and sit, put together a game plan here for at least the next three weeks. So, two two phases essentially. Phase one would be a game plan, getting myself ready for the section championship, which is 24th and 25th of August. So we got about three, three and a half weeks. Second part of that phase is getting myself ready for the national championship. So making sure that I can still finish in the top 20 so I can play in the PGA championship. And part of that phase will go in depth and really working on getting my, my swing worked, worked out. I'll be working with you with, with during your, your junior camps that you run, um, you help, helping there, but also working on my game at the same time. Um, if if you'll, any of you don't know yet, John, he, uh, he runs junior camps in the summertime, adult camps, junior camps. Uh, in Hudson at uh, White Eagle Golf Club and also down in Heritage Links in Lakeville. Great golf coach, Hall of Fame golf coach, so I'm excited to work with John. Well, I'm glad that you got in touch with me and we're going back to work again. Uh, I've taken a look at some of the videos of when you were playing really, really well, which is about a year ago. Compared that with some of the videos that you sent me so that I had an idea. We still have an issue with your pelvis, how your pelvis moves. Uh, and the transition from the top is not as perfect as it can be, so we got a little room for improvement there. The best thing is, is we've got over three weeks to get ready, and as you know, it takes 21 days to put something new into a golf swing. It doesn't happen overnight. Yep. Uh, you won't own it. Psychologists sell us a thousand successful motions or 21 days. We've got almost four weeks before this is gonna be put into place, so we got plenty of time to, to get you back into pre peak form. Right. And then we're not like breaking this entirely apart. It's, it's stuff that I've worked on in the, in the past. It's just kind of regrooving and getting myself back in position. So I'm a hard worker when it comes to trying to really make sure I get myself back on that position there. So I'm excited to get back in, in a good swing. Yeah. And I, I don't think this will take us very long, but again, just to cement it in there, it just takes some time. And, and you are a practice nut. You love to practice. You're a really, really hard worker, which makes it so fun to, to work with you and of course, get a chance to carry your bag in the PGA Championship. Perfect, well, <laughs> let's get started here. It's a beautiful day here at the University of Minnesota, Les Bolsved, back at the team area. Let's get to work. Let's go. And for sure you're not hitting any pulls. I'm, hmm, so I, maybe the occasional with driver is like a kind of like a, a little pull, but it's, it's not very often. It's, and, you're, and all your wedges are online, they're not left. They're definitely not left. Okay. No. No, they're, they're pretty. They're pretty straight, unless I'm lined off up incorrectly to to make up for it. How about a little fade? Tiny little fade. Yep. But uh, I'm I'm definitely not drawing the ball as much as I used to. Okay. I mean, which is good because I was overdrawing it a little bit. But and that's because I worked so hard on working on that club path to be in to out, in to out. And I feel like this year it's been a lot more neutral. Yeah. So it's been I've been hitting some pretty straight balls for the most part. Okay. Which is mm. straight straight's good, but uh, sometimes when you line up a little to the right and you and then kind of leave, leave it out there a little bit. With my path sometimes still being a little bit into right, into out, it's being a little more of a push. Okay. Yeah. That one felt like a pretty good swing. It just started a little right. Tell me when you're set and stay right there. Okay. You good? Yep. Okay. 
ever since you and I have worked together, you've always said, you I don't get back and get back set again. You've always had, you've always been just a little open with your feet, with your wedge, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. Yep. But set again. I'm going to set, forget this line, forget your uh, toe stance line, just set normal. Set how you feel with your feet. So follow this line or don't? Nope, set okay. how you feel. I don't mind that because it helps get your hips through. All right. Just tell me when you're all set and ready to swing. All right, ready. Good, stay right there. This is also something that you've always had an issue with, with your shoulders being lined up to the right. See how that's not parallel to your toe stance line? Right, that's so, pretty much where I hit that last shot. Yeah, exactly, so yep. take a look at your, tar at, where, at your target. Yep. See some shoulder, They're looking at your target though. You see some shoulder? Yep. Okay, now we square ourselves so we're with the toe stance line. Now you see less shoulder. Right. Okay, yeah. so that's square. So before you swing, you gotta make sure you see that, you have that look. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Yep, Okay. makes sense. Yeah, this seems pretty far left. When you put this, this down here, I thought we were aimed like 30 yards left, that's what it felt like. Well, again, you know, that's been a tendency that you've had since we started working three years ago. Yeah. There, now you're square. Didn't go right. And who would have thought? Yeah, right at the Ball target. Right at the target. And that's what I noticed in the last video you sent me too. It's a little close. I, I, I noticed that your that your shoulders were just a little bit close, and that's why my question to you was: Have you been hitting some pulls from there, or some baby fades? Because that would be the natural right. shot from there. No, it's just it's just felt like it's just being a little pushed to the right, like that that first shot there. Which would have been a good swing path following right. the incorrect shoulders. As I said I felt like it was a good swing. It does feel really open. That's really good. So then the feel, the feel on the downswing right. has to feel a little bit more like it's going it, a little yeah. bit more in to out in order for you to actually be on the target. Right. So that was what, 10 feet left? Yeah. Those, that, that one, because I just felt like I... We don't, we yeah. don't need 10 footers for birdie. Right. Three we footers. Need Perfect shoulders. Very nice. So, played up in Alexandria on Saturday, Pro-Am. Um, ended up being tied first with Tom Lehman. I wanted to beat him. <laughs> this is his home course there too, but uh, as I was, it was kind of cool that at least he didn't beat me. But there were a couple of wedge shots where I had about 100 yards that I left. It just felt like coming through. It just felt like I just didn't have any room. Hit a little thin and just kind of short right of the green. It's actually what it felt like. And it was just like that, that push shot. I just feel like yep. I didn't have room to clear and get through. And again, if, if you had your shoulders closed for that shot, that's exactly where the miss is going to be. All right. So stay right there. Don't move. Don't, ah, don't move. Stay there. Now, if I put this, if I put this shaft, notice that the shaft is, is perfect to your toe stance line. Yep. Now make that move where everything moves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see where you go? Yeah. And we want to keep those hips square and then square your shoulders. So I'm going to leave this rod there and then you square your shoulders. And that, that engages some different muscles. Yep. Yep. Atta boy. I'm going to say it now. I have not hit my driving iron, my three wood, or my four iron, three iron, or three wood very well at all. I've had zero confidence with it. Three wood, I've been hitting behind the bowl. Three iron, I've hit chunks 100 yards down the fairway. Four iron, I've, I've literally done the same thing with as well. I literally feel like I've had to try and feel like I'm catching the top of the ball at times. It's been, it's been really bad. I'm guessing it's probably associated a little bit to the setup because if I'm closed off here, that's the I'm going to come down and kind of catch the catch behind. You're 100% correct. Right, because I got a, I got my high, a hybrid that I haven't put in my bag in two years because I've played a driving iron, I'm like, I need to find something that I know I can hit straight from 220 yards to 250 yards. Anything else that's been shorter, I've got away with it probably because it's more loft on the club and it's a little bit shorter. But uh, those clubs have been terrible. And it's been costing me a lot of shots, like anything shots 50 yards left or chunk down the fairway with four iron in my hand, where I, you know, I'm, 
I'm a very good driver of the ball. I hit the ball pretty straight with my with my driver. I'm like, why don't I just hit driver on every hole? And that's kind of how I've kind of ended up playing because it's either the driver or five iron off the yep. tee. So this, I'm hoping this then will translate into those clubs there too. Do you want to know? Do you want to know? You're you're 100 correct, by the way. Do you want to know why? Why would that be? Because when you line up to the right, in order to get the club to go back to the left, you change the rotation spot of your body. So now when you're hitting your longer clubs, you're rotating more around your spine because you're trying to get back this direction. So the rotation leaves you back on the right side a little bit longer, which will cause you to hit it fat or will cause the face to be in a different position when you get to the impact area. When you're hitting these wedges, you're not doing that. But when you get to the longer club, for sure, it's going to change where you wrote, what you rotate around. Okay. And, I, and this is going to be an easy fix now that you're set up square. This is going yep. to be an easy fix. I'm going to give you a different feel when you get to those clubs. Okay. And, and, and you'll hit them straight again and, and long. All right. Let's hit a couple more wedges and then kind of work our way kind of to those longer clubs because I definitely want to touch on those today because, like I said, I, I got <laughs> to the point where I even it got to driver, I even cat, noticed I started catching the ground. You know, six inches behind, yep. it would kind of be a little drop kick. I'd kind of get away with it, but it would kind of, that pull to the left, it was more because I'd catch the ground first. Yep. Um, it just it just felt like I was hitting a lot of shots way behind the ball with, with, uh, with those clubs. I mean, I'm talking 100-yard carry I couldn't even get with a with three iron a couple of times. <laughs> that, it, it's not good. I mean... From from my from my skill to hitting those shots, I'm like, where are these shots coming from? Hey, but 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 when we first started this way back when three years ago, what did I tell you? The thing that you got to be the best at is getting the ball in the hole or on the green. Right. Yeah. And 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 that makes up for that makes up for the occasional oops yep. that you hit because you know that you've got a wedge in your hand and the wedge has got about as much chance of going in as any club you got, or you're going to get the ball up and down from that. So so. You know, different than an everyday type of player, you know deep down inside, as long as the ball goes forward and it doesn't go in the water somewhere, I still have an opportunity to make a birdie or a par. All right. Well, to add to this, I've also been hitting an OB, so it's a little hard to score if you're on that same tee hitting the same shot. Yeah. So that's been. I mean, I feel like to add into this, I've tried to hit away from trouble a little bit. So OB is right. I'll kind of aim left trees and just hit it there. I mean, it's got it got to that point. So I'm 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 excited. Hopefully, to see this translate into, the, into those longer clubs. Oh, you, trust me. It's been holding me holding I've got, me back. I've got you covered on that. All right, good, because it hasn't been good. It was definitely been. I mean, like I said, I feel so good with my driver because those clubs have been so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little heavy. It was straight. Okay. That's the shot I was waiting to see. Now here, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to relive that shot. I mean, you got to really. You might even have to close your eyes to do this. But I want you to relive that shot and tell me what did you feel that your body rotated around? Well, it, it felt like my hips didn't turn as much. That's what it felt like. That's not what That's I'm not asking. What it felt like. Though. What did it feel that your body turned around? I have no idea. Okay, here's what I want I you mean, to do. I mean, the correct here, answer would be left hip, but. It didn't feel like it was 100% left hip. Okay. Turning around. I don't want you to. I don't want you to think about what you're trying to do. But on this swing, I want you to focus 100% on what your on, on your body rotation. I, I don't care if you whiff this ball. I don't care what happens to this ball. I want you to completely focus on what do you feel with your body. And don't try to don't try to make something happen. Just let it happen, and then tell me the answer. I don't know, the middle of the ground. Okay, would that be would that be around your spine? It's a really tough question. I, it I, is. I, I yeah, I don't even know what it like it feels like it's rotating around like like my, my body rotating around. Like I mean yeah, the middle of the spine would, would make sense. Is but that I what felt you, like I was rotating around an area down here. Well that that area down there is also associated with the middle of your spine. That's why I'm asking. Let me think about the middle of my spine here. Well, that one felt like I cleared the hips better, but um, I guess the spine. I've never really thought about that question before. Well, I've never asked you before, but right. I, I'm just telling you something. I'm, I'm something I'm seeing out of the videos that you sent me. 
Are we, are we talking about this, the times when I'm kind of like back like this? Yes. Yeah. So here's, set up the head. Here's what I want you to feel. And I understand that this is impossible, but, I, but, but a feel is not. Yeah. So as, as the club is coming down, I want you to feel that this butt cheek is moving straight backwards. It's moving straight this direction. That's what I want you to feel. Okay. Okay. Now I know that's impossible for yeah. it to move backwards, but that's the feel I want. Feel a little different? I mean, it just feels like there's better hip turn or more speed in the hips, I should say. Absolutely, there's more speed. And that's why I said earlier that you've been hitting the ball, I'll bet you've been hitting the ball slightly shorter than normal. Yeah, because I'm probably not catching it perfect or not swinging at my normal sp speed with the hips, I guess. And which was really hard to do if you were lined up to the right. So now we got you lined up square. Yep. I want to feel. I want to feel that left hip going toward Robbie, Robbie Stadium over there, straight back. Feel a little more compression on the ball. I, I mean, yeah, it felt solid. I didn't hit it behind the ball, and I mean the hips feel way better. Like they feel like there's a lot better clearing coming through. So, so what happens as you as you make this hip feel like this hip is going is going straight back, which which again we know is impossible to have, yeah. but it's a feel. What happens is the left leg then goes to straight and pulls your and pulls your right side up to the finish. And you said one of the comments you made uh, I don't know, two minutes ago was, well I think I'm turning around my left hip. You said I think I'm turning around my left hip. <laughs> But you didn't actually know. And yep. That's why I wanted you to feel what you were, you know, what the deal was. Then you said you felt like you were rotating around, kind of the center of the ball. Well, that would mean that you're rotating around your spine. Yeah. And I want you to, if by pulling that back, that's going to change all your rotation, where all good athletes are to be around that left hip. Perfect. That felt really good. That was flush. So once you've got your gap bees and you're all set to go, then the focus is on that left butt cheek moving straight back to Robbie. Got it. And then for viewers, gap B is grip alignment, posture, and ball position. Yep. You're set. Butt cheek back to Robbie. Butt cheek to Robbie. Butt cheek straight back. But cheek. Awesome. That felt really good. That's my boy. That one went a lot further. It feels like when I'm doing this, it feels like just the left shoulder just goes. That's exactly like back what you're doing. That, and, like. and that sets you up without, perfectly. Without the lower body. Yep. I started to dissect the uh, the difference between doing this and then staying there and feeling like the shoulder just does there that. There you go. Butt cheek toward Robbie. Butt cheek to Robbie. Good. Perfect shoulders. Butt cheek. Awesome. That felt really good. Awesome. Right at the center of the window. That's absolutely perfect. And that was our goal to get to, right? Basically zero curve. Yeah. When we went from yep. my slice to the hook or drawer to now straight. I, we can always go back to hitting your 147 yard full swing cut six irons. I think it might have been a little further than that, but for <laughs> sure it was it was not pretty. <laughs> so this is where I'm I'm curious on my comfort level of having the shoulders open with the longer club. Well, can I come in? Because obviously I've played with a little bit more closed shoulders and then hit that little drawer. So well, you just wait. It's just going to look just like your one iron. Yeah. That was that was three iron, but. Like that shot right there. Yeah, that should be, it, that should be the miss. Yeah. yeah it's not really cutting. It's and, just... and all, and for all intents and purposes, that ball's you know on the right side of the fairway or just in the right rough. It's it's not getting you. It's not getting you in any trouble. Yeah. But that's just pretty much when I don't turn enough, right? That no, that's when you don't replace the left side with the right side. Okay. That's when you stand up just a little bit. It's hard to want to. 
stay down when the ball is on the tee. Like, should I lower the tee? No. Is it drill or? Your tee height's perfect because you see where you're catching it on the face. Yeah. Got to have some trust there, my man. Think you got that one three iron in your hand. That's my boy. I mean, I know I do what I'd like to see it just turn over just a little bit like that. Well, then, and that and that ball, that ball was, I mean, half of that turnover was wind. Yeah. Uh, 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 shoulders are closed. I mean, you got to make sure you make that look. Yeah. So I feel like I'm getting like here, and then it's like that. You are good now. Butt cheeks straight back to Robbie. That boy. And I say, it's harder for me to think about outside the versus inside. Because inside, hitting in a simulator, you don't care. Yeah. Like outside, you care a little bit more where the ball goes and how the ball flight is. Yeah. Like it's, I think it's a little harder for me to remember that last little piece, but I know it's important. Ah, uh, so close. Face was just maybe open a degree. Yep. And like I said, that, that will be your miss. Yeah. That's my boy. That is absolutely perfect. Coach, that felt really good to put in a good range session there. I don't, I can't remember the last time I almost hit a bucket of 150 bowls, so that was good. And there were full swings as well. Yes, they were. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little tired at the end. Driver felt like I was just, I had to really remind myself to make sure to turn onto that left side. Butt cheek to Robbie. That's butt cheek the, to Robbie. That's the takeaway from today. Um, make sure the butt cheek goes Left butt cheek goes a little bit back a little bit to the left. Make sure I turn through, but also feel like I'm still swinging out towards first base. With proper setup with your shoulders and right. your hips, because your tendency is the hips to be slightly open and the shoulders to be slightly closed. So you got to make sure of your gap B. You don't own gap B. You're going to you're going to change your swing to try to compensate for that. And, you, and gap B, you remember is grip alignment, posture, and bowl position. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. Grip is usually very fundamentally sound. If anything, it can get maybe a little on the weaker side, but that doesn't cause me to overhook it or anything like that. There's a preference, obviously, but for me, as I just feel like I don't want to be too strong. Yep. Obviously, alignment is the, the shoulders, making sure the hips don't go with it, making sure obviously my feet are lined up with my shoulders. Um, ball position, posture. Posture, make sure the back's nice and flat, hands are hanging down and in a good spot right here. And then ball position is, so every club is different. So starting with the wedge is right in the middle. Every club from there is half an inch longer. So we go about half an inch further forward. Away, that's away correct. Forward. So yep. that's, the, that's the gap B. It's actually, you know, I teach, I teach that as well. That's one thing I have taken from, from you is why I use that when I'm, when I'm teaching, especially uh, a lot of my more beginner golfers there too, because it gives them something to think about a lot too. Um, so game plan going forward here. So this felt really good. This is full swing, we're gonna finish up. We're gonna do some uh, more short game. We'll show that on a different video. Um, but what, what, what do you think, like with regards to putting a plan together on, on working on this? How many, you talked about that thousand balls, 21 days, um, you know, when you're working with your, with your juniors or with any of your um, clients, what do you prescribe with regards to the amount of balls they should be hitting and, and how often? Well, you know, it depends on, it depends how much time they have, whether they're, whether they're working 40 hours a week right. or they just had a new baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if they're high school kids, if they're, if they're, you know, going to school or they may play another sport, it, yeah. it's, it's all dependent. Yeah. A lot of this work, and you know this as good as anybody, a lot of this work can be done at home. Right. You don't have to get out to the range. You can, you can, uh, you know, work on your alignment by, you know, standing over a tile that you have at home that has a straight line on the tile, and you yep. can, until you get comfortable or comfortable, or in the mirror, right? Um, as far as swing time is, it's not so much the number of balls. It's not about the quantity of practice. It's about the quality of practice. Right. That's the answer I was, I was expecting you to say is it's quality versus quantity. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's you know me yeah. too well. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, yeah, I don't, I face it. I work full time, playing in events, have a, have a eight week year old. I mean, it's, I don't have the time to, to, to grind, grind, grind. I love to grind, 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 but I got to make sure it's a good, good quality practice that I'm doing in every single swing. It's butt cheek to Robbie, it's alignment, making sure, and that will also help. And you know, my swing plane is pretty good. I yeah. feel like it's, it's on plane. It, because I put in the hard work a couple of years ago, it's been able to retain all the way through. There were years where I would take a couple of weeks off 
I feel like I was going to shank everything. Yeah. Now I feel like I can take a month off and feel like my swing still feels pretty good. That's because I put in the time all the time. Yep. But when I'm doing it, it's still it's quality versus quantity. Yep. Yep. You've so, paid the price. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this, this felt good to get out here. I know I was close, and this just reinforced the fact that it, I was close. It's just one little thing that really influenced where I was catching the ball at impact. I was yep. compressing the ball much better at the end. I didn't hit any fat today. I mean, when I took fat, like six inches yep. sawed all the way over. Um, and it, it felt good. It felt good. I feel like the biggest takeaway for me is my hip turn. My hips felt like they were finally clearing out of the way again, which is it's something we know we've worked up in the past too. Yep. So stay tuned for the next series of uh, Thomas Campbell's Road to the PGA Championship.